Hello friends, this video on organic chemistry part 39 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about elimination reaction. Let's talk about the concepts of elimination reaction. So for example, this uh, they are one guy and one girl sitting in this bench. So what happens is this guy, let's suppose is not interested. This guy leaves. This guy leaves this place. Now the girls think nobody is there. I'm getting bored. Let me also leave, right? So this girl also leaves. What happens is there's a log that comes and close the chair because nobody is there for a long time. And thus we got a double bond, right? This kind of reaction is called elimination reaction. Let's see once again. So there's a bond and there were atoms attached to these two carbons. There are two carbons here, two portion of carbons, right? Now this guy leaves. The girl is lonely and she's getting bored. She also leaves and then this log comes and falls into this bench and double bond is formed. Nobody can come here, right? If somebody wants to come here, the person has to have power to remove the log and sit, right? That we have seen as part of addition reaction, but that's the typical real scenario of elimination reaction. And let's see the elimination reaction now. So here if you see two atoms or group of atoms are removed from molecule to form products. So for example, you see here, this is a typical elimination reaction. So if you see in this case, OH is uh, removed from this carbon, carbon one, and from this hydrogen is removed, right? And you got a double bond in presence of sulfuric acid. We'll talk about the reaction mechanism, how it happens. In this case also, if you see, the OH is removed from here, and one hydrogen is removed from one of these, let's suppose these guy, right? One hydrogen is removed from this, and then the double bond form in presence of H2SO4. This is the elimination reaction. So elimination reaction, if you three, there are three types actually: alpha, beta, and gamma elimination. In case of alpha elimination, the two atoms are removed from the same carbon. In case of beta elimination, two atoms are removed from addition carbon. In case of gamma elimination, two atoms are removed from corner carbon forms a Right. For example, I have, let me take you through alpha elimination. I have CH Cl3. Correct. So in this case, if I want to remove chlorine, for example, in this case, I am trying to remove HCl. So what will happen? It, it will become CCl2. Right. So if you see from the same carbon, to draw the structure, it's like there is only one carbon here. So from this, if I am trying to remove HCl, right, it will form something like this. From the same carbon, I am removing carbon and, uh, sorry, chlorine and hydrogen. So when generalized can be, I have R, I have H, H, and I have R, and I have R. Right, I have HCl here. From this, I remove HCl something like this correct so this is kind of reaction is called my alpha elimination where both the atoms are removed from same carbon in beta elimination i told the atoms are removed from addition carbon the one example which i showed was also beta elimination i have oh here so with this i, I add h2so4 this oh and this h are removed and you form a double bond correct this was a beta elimination example. One more example I can give for beta elimination is I have CH2, CH2, I have H here, I have OH here. Again, same thing, I have put H2SO4 and 7 degree Celsius, it becomes 1H is removed from here, 1OH is removed from here. You get in this case. Correct. Or if I have CH2, I have CH2, I have H here, and I have BR here. And if I use KOH here, H is removed from here, BR is removed from this carbon, you get. CH2 double bond, CH2 double three atoms are removed from two different carbons. Correct. Okay. Let's talk about gamma elimination now. So let me put this here. Beta elimination. Let's see gamma elimination. In this, I told the atoms are removed from corner carbon and forms a ring. For example, I have CH2 Br, then I have CH2, and then I have CH2 Br. Right? If you pass with zinc dust and you heat it, then 
what will happen is one bromine will grow from here one will grow from here so it will form a ring correct so this is example of gamma elimination correct so this is classification based on whether the atoms are removed from the same carbon to adjacent carbon or corner carbons right same carbon adjacent carbon same carbon adjacent carbon or common right so we also classify elimination reaction into e1 and e2 reaction based on the ray determining state similar to sn1 and sn2 right if the ray determining state is 1 it is even if it is 2 it is e2 reaction correct so if you see here this e1 stands for unimolecular elimination so in this case the ray determining factor is whether how easily the br minus br is leaving correct so it has two steps actually ionization and deprotonation first is ionization if you see the br leaves on its own and it is ionized and the second is my uh, this guy right h here if you see is removed from this by this guy cs3co minus it will attack this h it will take out this h and then it will form a bond if you see this attack this h actually here and it took out this whole thing so first is ionization where the the leaving group leaves on its own and creates a, a carbocation and then there is a deep protonation where one hydrogen is removed by this compound right so if you see this typically takes with tertiary alkyl halides where again the attacking is little difficult right and this is influenced only by the concentration of substrate because this is the retermining step this is very slow actually and this is fast correct and this generally occurs in acidic condition because in acidic condition this will be taken up you have to take out this hydrogen right so this is taken up by uh, in, in the acidic condition and high temperature correct so experimentally if you see you have this uh, concentration of substrate and you have rate so increase the concentration of substrate the rate increase but if you have this uh, uh, electrophile or any any attacking region attacking region so increase the concentration of uh, uh, attacking region the rate will be same so this says that the rate depends only on the substrate concentration not on the attacking region concentration so it's called even reaction and this happens only in weak basic or acidic medium okay, it's a weak base it will grab this uh, hydrogen from it right weak, weak base will take this hydrogen correct and to form a double bond let's talk about e2 reaction it needs a strong base actually it stands for bimolecular elimination reaction because here it is one step it is one step but both the substrate and the attacking region takes part right it's only one step where both happens for example in this case right this is my attacking region this guy will attack this guy right and in, the, in this one step itself you see this attack will happen and this bromine will come out right this bromine will come out and this guy will also come out right? it needs a strong base because if the base is not strong this will not come out right so you see the strong base in this case correct so if you see it's one step process so if you see E1 and E2 is not dependent on the number of steps, it's, it's other way around actually. If you see E1 reaction, the rate determining uh, thing is only one, that is substrate, but there is, it's two step process. E2, the rate determining step is two, I mean there are two things to determine the rate, substrate and the attacking reagent, so it is two, but there are one step in this, there's only one step. So please note E1 and E2 doesn't depend on the step, it depends on the uh, uh, what determines the rate whether it's only substrat or substrat and attacking reagent correct so this e2 is one step elimination reaction it happens in a single transition so typically primary and secondary undergoes this because you get a space to attack correct and reaction residues include both by uh, my attacking reagent and my substrat so it's called bimolecular so this is second order Correct. It needs usually strong bases required to pull this. 
So we discussed E1 and E2. Little confused? Let's compare E1 and E2. Right? So E2, strong weight is required. E1, the base strength is more important. Both E1 and E2 needs a good living room. That's the only difference between E and E2 actually if you compare, right? So, so now the question is we discover we discussed substitution reaction, we discussed elimination reaction. In both the cases, actually, if you see the substrates are generally the same, right? We use alkanes, sometimes we use alkynes, alkenes. In one case, we, we talk about substitution. In one case, we talk about elimination. For example, we have alkanes, right? In one sometimes we talk about almost same nucleophile actually, it's almost same nucleophile. Sometimes we say that condens uh, elimination happens, sometimes we say substitution happens. So what favors elimination and what favors substitution? So if you see, elimination is favored when steric hindrance is low. So in that case, we talk about elimination, where the base is, the, the, the whole solution is more basic. So with that, if you see, if it is basic, the deprotonation can happen actually. So the H which is there, if you see in this case, let's suppose, right? So this H can be pulled out. Correct for example, I have this, right? Something like this. This bromine goes off. On this bromine goes off, so I have two options. Either one chlorine comes in, or if the solution is basic and there is no extra nucleophile here, right? This solution will take out H from here. If the solution takes out H from here, it forms a double bond. It's an elimination reaction. The solution is not that basic, it won't be able to take out H from here and some other nucleophile will attack here, it will become a substitution reaction. Correct. So if you increase the basicity, basicity, the elimination is uh, the reaction is more of elimination reaction because the basic nature of the solvent will be able to pull this hydrogen. Correct. You increase the temperature, the elimination reaction increase. The steric bulk of the base increase the elimination and the third is the nucleophile is poor. The nucleophile is poor, this see, it's pretty easy actually, right? See, in both the cases you see, let's suppose uh, you have this kind of scenario, right? You've got this plus here because the bromine has left, let's suppose, right? And I have got an H here and uh, like this. And I have H here and I have H. Bromine has left. Now if the nucleophile is weak, right? If the nucleophile is weak, it won't be able to attack. The new nucleophile is, able, is weak, it won't be able to join here, right? If the nucleophile is strong, it will just join here. It will become a substitution reaction because now, just now the bromine has left. The bromine has left, it will become plus carbocation. If the nucleophile is strong, it will attack here to become a substitution reaction. If the nucleophile is weak, but the solution is more basic, the solution will take this H from here. Right? So this will become elimination reaction. Hope you understand this, right? So if the nucleophile is strong, it will attack this carbon with a positive charge, it becomes substitution reaction. If the nucleophile is weak and the substitution solution is more basic, right? The solution will take out this H plus here, it will become a double bond. So there are two main factors actually which govern one is the uh, the basicity of the what do you call solvent and the poor nucleophile. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.